Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's installment of the OpenText Live webinar series. My name is Jagdeep Dillon, and I'll be moderating today's call. With me today is Helmut Ryman, Lead Solutions Consultant, and Martin Tietz, Product Marketing Manager. They're here to present what's new in OpenText Gupta Team Developer 7.4. If you have any questions today during the webinar, uh, simply type it into the Q&A box on the top right corner of your screen, and we'll address them either during or after the presentation. And if we're unable to get to any of your questions today, we will be doing a follow-up with you directly. Today's session is being recorded, and you'll be able to find the PowerPoint along with the recording tomorrow on our support page. We'll also be sending an email with all of these materials within the next few days. And... I'd like to just make sure everyone's aware, aware of our new advocacy program, OpenText Voyager Champions. We're bringing together a special community of customers that have achieved innovative and impressive results using OpenText. The goal of the program is to work with you, to tell your story, and to recognize your success as OpenText advocates. And addition, additionally, Voyager Champions customers will enjoy VIP treatment at our events and have various opportunities to connect with OpenText leadership. Customers that are already participating in advocate activities are automatically enrolled into the program. Uh, please contact us at champions at opentext.com to learn more. And with that, I'm going to hand things over to Martin to get us started. Thank you very much, Jack Deep. And welcome, friends of the SAL programming language the SQL Windows IDE, and the Team Developer product. Here are the highlights we are going to talk about today. Gupta Team Developer 7.4 has uh, many exciting new things, programming enhancements that we will talk about, UX enhancements. There are actually quite a number of um, UX enhancements that may, may, will make the user interface of, the, of your applications uh, more flexible and suitable for High definition displays like 4K, 6K, 8K displays. We introduce a number of reporting enhancements and um, deployment enhancements, and there is more um, as well. So join me in uh, checking out what's um, new in Team Developer 7.4, and here are the programming enhancements. This one is the new for each loop. You have faster and more intuitive coding of array based loops. Um, <clears throat> the loop basically automatically loops through the through an array of uh, variables. All the data types can be used of the um, team developer, including UDBs. And um, uh, all the handling is um, done automatically for you, the loop iterations and everything. And um, if, so if you look at that statement, for each my variable in my variable array, then this my variable, um, <clears throat> Um, instance variable basically contains the actual element that is being processed in the loop. And if that element is null, then the um, variable is null as well. So that was a question in a previous um, a webinar that we had on this topic. So this is pretty exciting, these new for each loop that make, those make loop probing programming much easier. And another thing related to loop execution is the continuous statement so say in a certain condition, you just want to jump out of the iteration of one uh, of a loop, um, you know, of a loop iteration, basically, you just um, use the continuous statement. And I've coded here a little sample. So if my UDV instance dot n key equals two, um, then I'm just jumping out of this loop iteration and going to the next loop iteration. And all the code after that continuous statement will be executed which is a nice control statement to have for your um, loop coding. And um, Helmut is um, sitting next to me or sitting um, at home and will show you all these things later in examples. So we won't switch back and forth between samples and uh, presentation. I'll go ahead and show you all the presentation things and then Helmut will show you all the samples for the, um, for the things that are new in Team Developer 7.4. Copying UDVs, or as that image indicates, cloning UDVs. So where you have a new API called a SAL object copy, which basically copies one object to another. And this, these objects, of course, both need to be of the same class or the, a class that is exactly the same. This is um, helpful because 
you could do that on your own, of course. You probably have done it on your own before. It's a bit tedious to, to copy all the single elements of a UDV. Um, and this one here is much faster than what you have programmed on your own. So that's um, a nice performance enhancement as well. Okay, so from programming, let's go to reporting. Let's see what we have here. This is what um, our customers have requested, more reporting power. We know that um, you are using Report Builder a lot to create quite complex reports. We have had <clears throat> issues where people were complaining that after, an, I don't know, 1,600 report um, runs, that, you know, we were, we were running out of memory. So we have fixed a number of things in the past years to make this a very robust reporting tool. And now we are adding eight more break groups. So we have <clears throat> up to 16 break groups um, available in um, Team Developer and Report Builder reports now. Image users, usage enhancements in reports. There are several new things with images in reports. The <clears throat> transparency of PNH, PNG images is ONOT. So you can see that uh, little um, image on the right side where the, with a the gray background. That gray background won't, dis won't display anymore. And you will have a nice, you know, <clears throat> you will, the, the underlying um, image or background will shine through. The EXIF data for image orientation is ONAT. So <clears throat> if you have an image and that is displayed like that in a report, now it will be displayed like this. Also, you have conditional display for images. We did have that for, I think, for lines and all other objects of a report. But now you can use that for images as well. So <clears throat> depending on the computation of the formula, you can display an image <clears throat> or not. There are more reporting features. You can be more environmentally friendly by using the um, duplex printing features of the SR Report Print API. You could use uh, duplex printing, of course, before when you use the uh, printer driver um, user interface. There you could check that on, of course, but now you have, can do that from your own user interface or from your own code, <clears throat> if you like. So there are two new flags, Report Print, you duplex horizontal and duplex vertical. And <clears throat> you can also, we have that function side report print to file, which basically executes a report and creates a PDF file. And that now can <clears throat> invoke that report, that PDF file to be printed after the, ex after the creation of the, of the PDF file. So a little more functionality for um, handling PDFs in um, Team Developer. Okay, so what user interface enhancements do we have in Gupta Team Developer 7.4? You might have seen that before. We, have, we are introducing window zooming requested by many users. As users are moving to 4K, 6K, 8K displays or whatever that will be in the future, there are things necessary to adopt to that. You know, some users um, might be older and like to increase the font size maybe um, so for them, window zooming uh, is quite handy. We did introduce um, control anchoring <clears throat> with 7.3, which increased the amount of data or the amount of inf information you can see in a, in a window when you increase the window size. But now you can do both. You can increase the amount of information, but you can also zoom the window between 100 and 400% using a single easy call SAL zoom window. And you can also retrieve the zoom using SAL get zoom. And you see that on the image on the right side here is the larger image is the 400% zoom and then related the 100% zoom um, is that little window that you see on top of the large one. So these are the levels, these are the maximum levels and yeah, any number in between you can use in your application and give that to your users to give them optimum usage of their application and screen real estate. We do also have responsive layout enhancements. So we have .NET control anchoring now. The .NET applications can now also leverage control anchoring. Control anchoring is that method where you can increase the size of a window. And with that, the <clears throat> controls holding data will increase in size as well and display more information. So that's what you, you, know, what you see, for example, when you increase the window of Excel, then <clears throat> you know it's not that the 
content, that the contents will increase. It's not zooming, but it will increase the amount of data that you see. And that's the control anchoring part of how, how you can um, react on that or how you can provide your users support for um, high definition displays. So <clears throat> then there are several more control anchoring enhancements. There's a new anchor maximum width and anchor maximum height property to avoid control overlapping when the window size is increased. The MDI toolbar contents participate in control anchoring and grid columns can participate in control anchoring using the new table flag call size proportional um, to be used with the call style table set table flags. And you can also <clears throat> retrieve the horizontal and vertical anchor properties with style anchor, anchor get. So you, during runtime, you can see um, what anchoring properties are set. And now you will see a number of screenshots here that display that grid um, proportional um, <clears throat> anchoring. So this is what happens when you increase the size without that new feature. And this is with a new call size proportional flag enabled. So you see the column size of the grid increases and displays more information as well. And then we have something very special <clears throat> added in 7.4 as well, which will be very helpful to many of you as well. It's, it's kind of a third option to all this control anchoring proportional child scaling. And this will resize childs based on the parent resize ratio. And we have an API call for that, style anchor child in its scaling. And with that enabled, you will basically get um, something like that. And you see that the entire window contents are being scaled uh, proportionally, which is a really nice feature that will help you <clears throat> as well to get your um, user interface design adopted to you know, very large screen resolutions that are pretty common today. Okay, some new grid features, grid data export. The grid data export now includes the cell height and width, so the formatting of the um, grid will be <clears throat> passed over to the Excel file, and uh, that is being done using those new uh, parameters there, export auto-fit columns and export auto-fit rows. You can get the number of rows in a grid or table using table query row count without getting, you know, doing the result, um, the SQL get results at count, which can take quite quite a while. So that is a um, convenient function to get the quickly the number of rows of a table or grid. And you can now swap rows in a grid or table. You have a function for that, salt table swap rows. You just um, provide the <clears throat> number of rows and then um, the position and it will swap those for you. Helmut will show you that in his samples, of course. So more UX features. The date picker control, you can now preset selected dates in a date picker control. So basically when you bring up a window, you can have certain dates already selected, for example, to show dates that are already taken for a reservation. Then the rich text control has several new things. Um, you can get or set the read-only state of the rich text control um, <clears throat> to make it unedible, unusable for the user in certain circumstances. Then you can paste the contents of the clipboard into the rich text control using formatted or unformatted text, which is also very helpful. So you're probably used to that from Word or other text editors where you can take over the formatting or not take over the formatting dependent on what you want to, how you want to insert that. And that's done using a new message called SAM RTF paste. And the return value from that message decides if the contents are being um, pasted as plain text or as um, <clears throat> formatted text. Then several user interface things, um, new hotkeys introduced for bold, italic, and underline. And these hotkeys are dependent on the uh, user locale, so the uh, user language. The tab control, um, you can retrieve if a, if a tab page is enabled, and you can find out if a tab page has a child. So more control overall <clears throat> in the UX area, and <clears throat> massive new features for you to um, create applications that leverage <clears throat> 4K, 8K, displays like that. So 
coming to the new deployment options in uh, Team Developer 7.4. We now <clears throat> have an installer builder for Win32 and Win64 applications. Um, this installer builder is the dialog that you see on that uh, slide here. You basically create, you provide a file name, um, provide your details like version, description, and so on. You, do, you say if you want to include the SQL based client modules, you can provide the uh, SQL in the server path that should be used, and you can include the report builder installer um, for the um, <clears throat> report um, execution. And the last item there on that screenshot is um, you can include your own files with that um, installer, so you have the ability to include a folder that includes all the things that you need for that application, and those will be included in, into that installer as well. So very <clears throat> much easier to deploy your, deploy your applications at customer sites using this new um, installer builder. Then we have a number of things that are new as well. In the IDE source control, Git has been enhanced um, with branching and pull in the um, user interface of the source control management. The find all dialog has been enhanced with search currently only, find whole, whole words only, exclude comments, exclude included libraries, results to output window. So it's a much more powerful dial dialog that um, allows you to find the things in the way you, you need them to. We have uh, a new date API. You can get the last day of a month uh, using salt date month end, and you can add end days to a date time value using um, simple date mass, basically. And then the menu APIs are quite uh, powerful as well. And again, Helmut has samples for these as well. You can now delete menus at runtime that have been defined in the team developer outline, which wasn't possible before. Um, you can disable the context menu for descendant scroll bars. And then you can use SAR menu set status text, SAR menu set tip text, and the <clears throat> respective get functions to find out what the status text and the tip text is momentary, or you can set them. So a lot more control for your menus as well. And there's more. So there's a for notifications. We, you know, we have these SAR notify. APIs, and there now is a function SAR notify clear toasts that you can call if you like to clear all notifications. If, for example, if a user leaves uh, the application, so you, you clear the Windows uh, <clears throat> toasts area or notifications area from with notifications that have been created using your application. And SAR notify show toast can now use resource icons for, um, for the icons. The REST JSON includes a extended settings now for a timeout and other things. So we have a new SAR JSON class library for you that you can use to configure extended settings for the um, <clears throat> REST API. One little ad enhancement for the visual, visual tool chest, um, set item font to set the font for a um, <clears throat> C list view. The ribbon API, you can add um, items at runtime dynamically and use picture binary or strings for the item image. And <clears throat> so ribbon set item image X displays a picture in a ribbon from a binary, a file, or from a specified file name. And then the biggest thing in ribbon bars really is ribbon inheritance. You can now have ribbon bars uh, <clears throat> enabled in uh, window classes, so they will be available in your uh, class libraries as well. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Helmut for a presentation of the things that I just showed you. Helmut, please. Many thanks, Martin. So it takes a few seconds to um, get my screen ready. That means to transfer my screen and my layout and so on to your uh, site. And also, we found out that this webcast technology has a little bit of delay between what I can see or what I click and what you can see. So be, please be patient. I want to slow down my speech a little bit because um, I have to wait uh, until you can see the source code and the IDEs and so on. 
So I've prepared around 15 different samples to show the new features. I cannot be feature complete. So if you download Team Developer, you will get a nice document, new and changed features. Please look into this um, into this document. You will find a lot of uh, things which we cannot show or which uh, is really, uh, I don't want to say a, a late minute um, new feature, but I had to create a few samples. You will see the samples which are not really inside my previous talks about uh, TD 7.4 for for example, and deconsulting for some selected customers in the Nordic. What I want to show now is uh, a few new features like um, for each loops. Martin showed you the screenshot and um, it's pretty easy to use. At this point, I'm using an array of objects is based on a functional class and I can step through this array and I can also nest this array. That means if something is uh, okay, then do the next for each loop and so on. And I remember one of your colleagues told me, we are waiting now for more than 18 years for this uh, feature. Now it's in. So 18 years only to get this feature in. And um, now I try to run and to compile this application. By the way, I'm using the 32 two-bit environment, but it works also in the same way uh, in 64-bit. So you can see if I start my loop, it's uh, for each loop I got uh, in the, inside the first loop, I have in my uh, first column or my first uh, information of this um, UDV variables, and then I concat, for example, the string temp with the string variables, which are predefined in my functional classes or which are collected from the database and so on. So I stop this and I have always an eye on the screen, which can you see? And uh, what I want to do is now, I want to go into the next feature. That means, for example, into the continue statement. And that's very, very useful. So we have again a loop and uh, you know, sometimes maybe you want to fill a grid, you want to do something very special uh, inside your application, but uh, sometimes inside the loop um, you find out maybe a special value is false or you don't want to show the row because of different um, yeah, settings and so on. Then you have to create an if cascade to, um, yeah, to skip this row and so on. With this new feature, with this new function, you can use the statement continue. That means in this case, is my UDV instance and key equal to, then continue. Don't use uh, the following lines. So uh, skip the um, lines and go forward to the next, in next iteration of this loop. That means at least um, you don't have to create if cascades and so on. So you can say, okay, skip it, do a continue next iteration of this loop. Let's have a look into the grid anchoring. Martin showed you also some uh, samples, some screenshots and so on. And I want to give you um, grid control anchoring. I choose the grid one and you will see we have inside the window, we have a layout and Martin told you it is possible if you have only maybe two or three or four columns and you want to use resizing for form, then maybe it makes sense to uh, do a proportional extension of the columns. Normally you have fixed uh, values and at this point you can go and again, we have fixed values and you will see you have a space on the right hand side of this um, grid control. If you go back and switch on the proportional stuff, and the settings, then you get additional, only the four um, columns, but you get additional information inside the columns because the space of the columns uh, are split into the four parts of proportional parts of the grid size. Then we have zooming. Before we go ahead with some nice additional uh, grid features, I want to go into the zooming section. That means cell zoom. 
and we go into the Zoom form. And Marty mentioned we have now is a nice feature to save some money, don't buy new glasses, only to change the size of the window, redo the resize to the zooming. So if you look into, for example, a button, we have only the a simple function like cell zoom window for the form 100% or up to 400% in button number four. So at least you can see we have now 400% and again I can compile this application and you can see my application is popping up with a short delay and now it's set to 100%. I can set it to 150%. I have to wait a second, so because of the delay, and I can do it up to 400%. Go back to 100%. So that's for the whole form, or if you use it inside an MDI window, then uh, the whole MDI window, all the uh, fun, or all the forms, MDI forms inside this MDI window are also zoomed, and all the controls are zoomed, and so on. So that's also pretty nice. Let's have a look into the proportional resizing. Martin showed you also some screenshots. I can do and open that one to explain a little bit more. So we can set up a scaling. Um, let's start first the application before we look into the source code. And if you look into the application, Hopefully you can see it in a few seconds. Here we go. Then you will see we have a, a few, uh, let's say, grids. We have some columns inside and so on. And if you use uh, anchoring and so on, maybe you get an overlapping of controls. You get spaces and so on. So this is not really a nice looking application. So what you can do is you can set the scaling on. And if you do the resizing again, then you will see uh, the space between the grids and between the controls are always uh, the same, and I cannot bring them and overlap them. And also, you have the possibility to define a maximum anchoring and a minimum anchoring for the width and for the height of the controls. If I disable again this control, this feature, then again, I can overlap the control if needed, but I don't think that it's really uh, nice. So that's much better if you do this something in that way. And if you look into the set of the scaling, it's pretty simple. You have to define cell anchor child uh, in its scaling for the control and set the directions like for the horizontal and the vertical um, scaling. And if you set it to false, of course, it's switched off. Let's have a look in some other features with anchoring. And um, controls in my MISC, my MISC directory, because I found uh, a few new functions inside the document, and I have to test it, of course. So let's have a look into the um misc anchoring that one and open it and i did a little bit more so you can see we have uh, some buttons on the screen and you will see i named some buttons as uh, the labels of buttons with the name of the functions because then i have the relation between what the function is use doing and i get immediately a result if i click maybe on a button and so on so let's start first at all with uh, cell anchor is enabled for a form. I have to wait a second again. So here we go. So I can check is anchoring enabled for a form. Yes, it is true. And I can find out what is set for the anchoring. For horizontal, we have both. And for vertical, we have top. And I can do the same for all the child windows. So this is enabled mode of uh, uh, horizontal, mode verticals, and so on. So I can check every control on my form, on my dialogs, and the I windows, and so on, if something is anchored. And 
if I resize something, you will see at this point, uh, it's uh, anchored to horizontal bows. And if I switch on now my child um, initialization, so my child anchoring for the scaling, true, then you will see it's proportional. So we have the normal anchoring. That means uh, we move maybe 20 inches or 10 inches or five inches to the right, but it's really done for the old controls, for all controls inside uh, this uh, line. If I switch on the anchoring uh, child init scaling, then you will see uh, it's proportional to the whole screen. So then let's have a look into our grids. Miss grid features. Here we go. So if we look into that, I start again my application. And you will see we have uh, some results in our grid. And Marty mentioned if you do a uh, SQL uh, get, I don't know the, the full name of this function to get results at count, that's the name. Uh, but maybe you have skipped some lines because you do for each loop, so you do all the continuous statements to filter down the result sets and so on. And th then you need to net really the numbers of rows inside the grid. Then you can talk of, uh, and call table query or row count. At this point, you get 24 rows inside this grid. Let's open a little bit. So we scaling. We can swap rows. So it starts with zero, and we want to uh, swap the row number with the number two, with the ID two, and with the row number and ID four. That means that one and that one, 110 and 111, 11. So we can swap the rows, and we have no new sorting inside. I extended my small function a little bit. So I can switch and test with that one. So uh, swap the rows with the ID 0 and number 10. And swap it, and it's done. So you can create your own mechanism to sort something to get your favorite on top, and so on. And we extended SolidGrid uh, Data Export X to get um, information about the size of the columns. So I do, again, this um, export. And I set only the feature. Oh, stop that one. I added the flags export autofill columns, export autofill rows. And now if I open my environment, oh, let's see in my MISC features, you will see there is now a new XLS document, an Excel, doc, Excel sheet. And I open this Excel sheet, and you will see we have the column sizes. And also, what we have is um, if you have a multi um, rows inside, um, maybe inside a grid, um, yeah, a cell, and so on, you will see the same at the export of this Excel file. So the format is also inside this Excel sheet. Stop that one. Let's stay in this area with the new features, MDI window. So I start again my application. And what you see there is a dialog docked into this MDI window. This is nothing new, but if you want to have uh, this picture on the, on the background, you can use the same picture functions, like for a picture control, like set picture set for a string, like set binary, set uh, image. So if I click on set string, you will see at least our headquarter in uh, Waterloo now as a background, and also you can use a resizing uh, for the MDI window. We can now reset the image. We can do it with, uh, for example, we set a binary. So the same function uh, is used like for a picture control. 
before we look into the code to show how it is done, uh, we have also uh, a dynamic way to create new um, uh, entries inside the ribbon bar control. So if you do a so ribbon item uh, X, then you will see we have now a new ribbon bar button, for example. And also, uh, if you look into the exit, we want to change the image X, then we can use a binary or a special uh, file or whatever you want to display inside or, or on this button. So let's have a look into the source code again. That's all. So simple, if you look into our ribbon bar for the NDI window. So this is the same function. So we can replace the pick one, for example, with this uh, NDI form, uh, NDI window, and then we get the picture. Um, inside this dialog, we can look into the content and we will see, for example, push button ribbon. And you will see here is a new ribbon bar. Uh, there's a ribbon bar control. And there are a lot of uh, new options like uh, the ribbon bar item type button. And you can, if I open again the tooltip and the help, you will see you can also use a combo box data field. So you can everything you can create on the fly uh, inside the ribbon bar. If we look into uh, the actions, you will see I collected this picture, this image from the pick control in various ways, like picture format PNG into a string, PNG into a binary, or get the binary and the type. And this is used inside, again, inside this ribbon bar um, to, yeah, to show this image on site uh, on um, MDI window. By the way, you can also use uh, the default background. That means uh, the default background is always available. That means uh, the zoom, uh, the, all the uh, rendering stuff and so on, the theming is also inside uh, this um, MDI window, but you can override it with this um, pictures, nice pictures, images, and so on. Then Martin uh, told you that we have a new uh, function or some new functions for Windows, for uh, menus inside Windows. If you look into a predefined window, like uh, this uh, menu window, you will find a copy menu, you will find the paste menu, and so on. And what I can do is I can start my application. Um, you can see in my edit, I can find the copy and paste, but I can also delete these entries. So these entries are not gone. So also for static predefined menus, you can easily delete uh, and menu entries and so on. What you can do is you can also change uh, the status text if you uh, do, for example, about TD 7.4, if you have a status text and so on, then you can change it. You can change the tooltips. And uh, if you read that back, maybe you can get this information because you need this information for language settings and so on. Then, before we leave this area, I want to show only uh, the new SAL function or the JSON APR, APL functions with uh, some functional classes, for example, to set the timeout for uh, REST UDV and so on. So it's very useful. You don't have to work around and so on because often you have to set the timeout. You have to check the timeout. You have to set the authentication. Uh, you have to serialize, deserialize something, and so on. So you can easily include now uh, the APL. So if you look into the libraries, it's a pretty simple cell JSON APL, which gives you all this function, predefined function, which can be used inside your application. Let's go into our next feature, copy objects. Start with the first one. So that's also 
very, very useful. So what I did, I created again a small application for testing various um, settings and so on. And I have now a function called fcopy, copy objects. What I'm doing, at least I create a class or a, a placeholder for a class with object null. So it's nothing, at least it's an empty, no instance is created at this point. Uh, it's only, I can use okopy company inside my coding assistant and everything is fine. What I do, I read out my data field for my company ID. I get my company and I pass in the instance variables into the form. At least what I would have to do is I have to create now an instance of my a copy company based on the new class company. At this point, I create an instance and I can now fill the information into this instance. So with a simple solid object copy, this is original, the first parameter is original uh, object. I can copy all this in instance variable, all the information into the copy. So it gives me the possibility uh, to yeah, pass all this information into the copy and work with the copy, maybe uh, give it a new number or set the ID to number null. If number null, do an uh, auto increment field inside the database with a new instance of this uh, um, element and so on. So running that one, it's pretty simple. I can type in 101 and I copy the object. This is my original information and this is now my copy. Of course, uh, if I do a number null, if I mentioned before, you can also use it with auto increment to create a new instance of this address inside the database or what you want to do inside your application. The second way is with arrays. So I do the same, the same function with arrays. Yeah, this is array of class company because uh, the ob object must always be the same. That means also um, you cannot copy, for example, class company to class company X with in uh, additional um, yeah, instance variables and so on. So then you get an error from the compiler that is not possible. So again, this is the same. I do different data, copy the object. It's the same, now it's inside uh, the array with the number two. So let's have a look into our rich text. Samples, rich text control. Here's my small sample about that. So what I can do is I can check out if the, my uh, rich text controller is read only, at this point is false. That's nice because I want to load now some uh, data and or maybe a template and so on into my rich text control. Here we go. It's formatted text is one of my uh, special uh, help system inside my one of my applications and so on. And I want to copy text. So let's do that one do a copy and do a paste. And now I will be asked to paste as an unformatted text. I choose no. Oops. No, here we go. So you can see it's now formatted and I can do the same copy and paste, paste, Yes, unformatted text. That means this is a standard text, no uh, resizing, no uh, yeah, changing the font, no colors, and so on. And of course, I can set my uh, RTF control now, restriction control of read only. It's now read only. It's not possible, I cannot type something in. And if I do it on false, I'm now I can again type something in. The mechanism for, the, mechanism for that uh, copy and paste is done inside the rich text control itself. So I have a message action, RTF paste, this is a new message, and I can use the WPARAM to find out 
Python as unformatted text, yes or no. If I return uh, false, then I do um, a formatted text. If I do yes, then I get an unformatted text. So you can create your own dialog. This dialog is um, always displayed if you do uh, right click with paste or click on the paste button. Some small changes and additions is inside the date picker. If you look into the date picker, I'm pretty sure you saw the source code. Then we can go ahead and uh, hopefully you can see my screen. Yes, you can see it. I can select now an array of objects get selected. Now I have an array of um, dates and so on, and I can pass them now back into um, this um, calendar control by clicking on set selected. So in one fly, I can select from the database all the, maybe the book dates and so on, can pass this information in one fly into the new um, yeah, uh, calendar control. The date picker. There's also a few new functions. Let's run this one. So I can find out the last day of July. I know the, <laughs> the last day, but now we have one function in the past. Maybe you create your own functions, global functions, or a helper class to get this done. Um, to calculate the, the, the next first of the next month, minus one and so on. So you have to do something. And also what you can do is now, uh, if you have the uh, 21st of July, and you can add maybe 30 days on the fly by using one solve function. So in the past, you had also to calculate plus days and so on. So if you look into that function, you would see it's a single line solve that a day on a special control and the number of the days and you get the result or for the end day of the month you get sal date month end for a special yeah chosen date tab control let's go back into our samples Tab control. Let's run it first. Now you can um, check is page one enabled? Yes. Is page two enabled? It's not enabled because you cannot reach it. Page three is enabled. Get the active page is page one. Activated, get active page three. So you have more possibilities to find out if a page is enabled, if it is uh, active, and so on. Or if you want to enable it and check if it is enabled, and so on, and so on. So it's also extending extensions for the MDI or for the top control. Then before we go ahead, Marty mentioned we have now the possibility inside the project tree to create an installer. So for that, for example, you can type in the, the file name, the product name, and so on. You have to type in the, uh, the manufacturer. And then you can include the SQL-based clients. You can include the server pass information. If you are using the uh, report builder, you can also include the report builder installer. And on top, you can also define, I want to add, for example, a special directory for my project because inside this directory, you can find all the images, the settings, INI files, whatever. And then you can click on generate and we create automatically an MSI installer. I don't want to do that because it takes maybe two or three minutes, but uh, the whole deployment is also uh, inside the package for report builder. The database clients uh, modules are in, inserted and so on. And this is maybe very helpful if you want to create uh, maybe, um, let's say, um, well, what's 
yeah, uh, a test case, or uh, if you want to create a sample application for you, that someone can try out your application. That means send him an installer, installed application, and then he has maybe a trial inside this environment, and you don't have to install the deployment, you don't have to install uh, the, um, all the, the settings, set up the environments, and so on, because everything is catched from the project directory. I don't want to run it for here, because this takes, again, a few minutes. If you look into our project, in our uh, build settings, you will find a new setting DPI awareness for high resolution screens and so on. You, so you can decide the application is a master, the system is the master, or you want to run it in compatibility mode. More information, you will find more information inside the document uh, new and change features of team developer. Uh, I'm running a little bit out of time. So Marty mentioned 16 break groups and report builder that we have PNG uh, transparency for images. So this is no honored. Uh, you have EXIF data for orientation. That means we are reading if it, uh, an image is landscape or portrait mode. And also we have conditional displays for pictures like the same for um, this special fields inside a report or if you want to hide information uh, if you want to show check marks or not and so on so at this point i want to finish my presentation of my demos and if you need additional demos if uh, if you find uh, this uh, a few demos are, and samples are not inside the sample installer please let me know we can ship this uh, information and all the samples the misc new features the last minute features of team developer uh, later on uh, if you want to try them out but most of them are straightforward because the description is pretty easy straightforward and i'm pretty sure you can use them and now I want to hand over back to Martin. Thank you, Helmut, for your very detailed and uh, good presentation of Team Developer 7.4. And with that, we are ready for the Q questions and answers. <clears throat> and um, let me see what we have here. So when will Gupta Team Developer 7.4 be available? So there's some good news here. It is available. You can download this today. If you have maintenance, you can download that from OpenText My Support and request your new keys. If you want to try it, you can uh, request the trial version from our uh, product page, and you will get the trial download of the new 7.4 version. Um, I think that one is more for you, Helmut. Yep. If an array element used used in a for each loop is null, will the loop instance variable be null as well? Helmut? Sorry, wrong button. It will be null. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so oh, you, you, you got muted. OK. And then I think yeah. the last question here is um, it answered itself. Um, you answered that during your demonstration. Can I include custom files into the new Win32, Win64 installers? And um, you showed it that that is possible. You can include an entire directory with all your custom direct, uh, files. And, yes, and all subdirectories and so on. So if you have a nested installation and so on, you can do that. Sure. And with that, um, thank you for joining. And I hand back to Jack Deep for some final words. Thank you, Martin. So at this time, we will be wrapping up today's session. Um, sorry, one moment. Uh, we will be wrapping up today's session. Please be sure to take a minute to complete the post-event survey before you exit the meeting as we truly value your feedback. Just one final reminder that today's webinar was recorded. So within a short period of time, you'll be able to find the recording on our My Support page. And we'll also be sending out an email with all of these materials attached. Thank you to both of our presenters for delivering the great material today, and thank you to everyone for joining us. Have a great day and talk soon.